for me, it's like the negative thoughts don't really stop coming, right? But how long I will allow them to stay is what's key. And if I allow them to keep me paralyzed, because we all experience fear, we all experience like the negative thoughts, but what you do next is what matters most. Are you gonna allow that thought to control you? Or are you gonna control that thought? Because in the end, we have the control. And so really setting those boundaries, really doing the mind work, and just really truly believing in myself. Because once I start peeling, I started to see me, I can see me, not because someone was telling me, but because this is who I was. I didn't need anyone to tell me that I'm beautiful for me to be beautiful. I'm just beautiful. I didn't need someone to tell me that I was intelligent. I was already intelligent. And so I just. You're listening to the First Class Life Show hosted by Lindsay Vertner, a holistic personal development show for high achieving leaders who desire to maximize their impact while creating a life full of purpose, fulfillment and happiness. So grab a drink, grab your notebook, and let's get started. Welcome, welcome to another episode of the First Class Live Show here with myself, Lindsay Vertner, and a lovely, lovely guest, Marcia Cole, is here with us, going to drop some gems. So thank you for tuning in to the First Class Live Show, your personal development show for high achieving leaders to help you maximize your impact while creating a life full of purpose, fulfillment, and happiness. Welcome to First Class Live Studios, Marcia. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you for having me, Lindsay. Yes, yes. So I have had the pleasure of getting to know you uh, last year, I believe, is when we first connected over the internet and I've been on your show. But tell the first class family, who is Marcia Cole really like? Give us the goods. Rip back the curtains. Let's see. Um, well, what I tell people, like, I'm just a girl that's allowing God to use her. I'm a wife. I'm a mom. I'm a sister. I'm a daughter. I truly love to have fun. I love to laugh. And I really love to pour into others by sharing my story. You know, I truly believe that the pain that I have experienced in life, if I can help anyone not experience that pain or limit the time that they're in that pain, Listen, I'm going to do it. Yes. And that is why we're so in alignment because we definitely are out to help other people. So I'm glad that you are here on the show. And I know that you've experienced some things um, just coming up. So just share a few of those obstacles. And then we're going to talk about how you overcame those obstacles to become the leader that you are today. So take us back. Okay, well, let's go back. Let's go way back. So I am, I grew up a fatherless child. Um, so that was very um, detrimental to, you know, my upbringing, where I always felt like I was missing something. Like, I felt like I knew part of me, but not all of me. And the simple fact that, as you can see, I have all these freckles on my face and no one in my family had them because everyone on my father's side had the freckles. And so I grew up with not loving myself, not loving who I was. Kids are me, right? Like, what are those thoughts on your face? Can I count the dots? You know, pippy long stock. I mean, I've been called everything, right? And so I've really been able to work through that and overcome that. Plus, I had an old school mom who, you know, what I say goes, like, I don't care about your feelings. So I really grew up with not truly understanding that I had a voice and that my voice mattered, but most importantly, how to effectively use my voice. And then most recently, I lost my 22-year-old brother in 2020 unexpectedly. So going through that process of, you know, grief and also forgiveness because he was um, he was murdered. Mm -hmm. So condolences on your loss. Um, I'm sure we are going to discuss more of what that looks like, but. First, I want to talk about you being a fatherless child. So did you know your dad at all? 
the very first time that I met my dad, like met, talk, I was about 13. Um, was the very first time I met him. Um, the town that my mom grew up in, my mom and dad kind of grew up in the same town. So I was visiting family and he was also in town. Um, and my aunt used to live down the street from his mother. And so I guess he got word that I was in town and he came to my, my aunt's house. And it was about less than 30 minutes. It was less than, he was just like, hi, how are you? And then he made like these promises with your address. I'm gonna send you some stuff. And then that was kind of like the end of the conversation until probably I was about 18, 19 when his mother passed away. Um, and I went to the services and I saw him again. But again, it was like, you know, very quick um, meeting. And then, you know, it's during the time that he's, you know, grieving his mother's passing and me meeting a lot of his family and my other siblings for the very first time. Mm hmm. So I know that a lot of people, some people grow up and they have both parents and then the other half of us grow up and we have just one parent or maybe we were raised by our grandparents or another caretaker. And so what was that like before you met him at 13? Just what was that feeling like of knowing that, okay, I have this mother that's here, but I know that there's a piece missing. Like even if home life is okay, I know that there's that piece missing because society says you have a mother and a father and I'm missing one of those pieces. So what was that like as far as just developing your identity and sense of who you were? It was hard. Like I truly didn't develop my identity, my true identity until I was adult. I spent all of my childhood, my teenage years, my young adulthood, trying to find myself, trying to understand who I was. I was always looking for me and other people because of my dad not being in my life. And for the simple fact that I knew that he had a whole nother family and he was taking care of those kids, I always felt like I wasn't good enough, like that I wasn't lovable. So I would do everything possible to try to get other people to love me. Now, I come from a loving family. Like my mom's family, they wrap their arms around me. Like I have so much love and I have so much support. But what people don't realize, that's not enough, right? Because some people, like you said, they don't have both parents, their grandparents raised them. Or maybe you have, like I had a stepfather, but it still leaves a dent on a child when their biological parent is not there. You don't know, you don't understand. And so you start to internalize and think that there's something wrong with you because a lot of parents don't sit down and have that conversation with their children and say like, how is this affecting you, right? Or maybe we need to get you some therapy. Right. So we can help you process this because it may be hard for a mother or a father or a grandparent to even talk to the child about it. But let's get some outside help to help you process what's going on. And so I just I just felt like I didn't know who I was. I didn't feel like I had a purpose. And I and I always did above and beyond because I just wanted people to love and like me. like I would do anything, you know, that people pleasing right mm -hmm. try to do try to try to be what you think other people want to, want you to be and do what other people want you to be so you can get that acceptance right that validation and that love from the outside world are you loving the first class live show then join our private patreon community not only will you help to support our ability to provide you with great content but you can also get exclusive perks like bonus videos and resources, discounts, episode transcripts, and more. So what are you waiting for? Join today at patreon.com forward slash first class life. Again, that's patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash first class life. Yes, yes, that's so important to recognize because I, I've experienced the same thing. So I knew who my father was and I saw him a few times a year, but he wasn't consistently in my life. And we really didn't build a, a stronger relationship. Well, 
we didn't build a strong relationship and then strengthen it as time went on. But first we had to do the work of healing, but that didn't happen until I was graduating high school and going into my college years. Um, but like you, my, my mother was very loving. Like I had everything that I could ever need as a child, as far as love and support and my family and friends were supportive and all of those things. But there is still that missing piece of like, well, wait, if I'm such a great kid, then why is my father missing? And like you, I also had to watch him raise my stepsister. And it was like, well, technically she's not even your biological daughter. So how come she can be raised by you? But I can see you a handful of times a year, if that. And so that also started in me, that feeling of not being good enough and that strive for perfectionism, that strive to make everybody like me, to excel in all the things that I'm doing, that people pleasing, because in my subconscious brain as a child, well, if I'm good at this, then I must be good for him. Or if these people like me, then I must be good for him to you know, be his daughter, be good enough to be his daughter. And it was like, you never felt good enough and you're going along all these paths in efforts to prove that you're good enough when really it has nothing to do with you. So what advice would you share for the leaders out there that may be listening and, and feel like, you know, I have issues with my father or I have issues with my mother being absent because it does show up in our behaviors and, and how we interact with the world around us. The first thing that I would say is it's not about you, right? Like you didn't do anything wrong and then go out. I, I'm a believer in therapy, right? So I truly believe in therapy. I believe in Jesus and therapy, right? Um, because when I was able to recognize, it was about 2015 when I realized, I'm like, wait, some, some things were going on in my household and I'm like, wait, I'm not loving myself. I don't know who I am. And I realized that there was some childhood trauma that I didn't heal from, which was being a fatherless child, one of them. And I knew that I needed God because I always had that foundation. And I got into therapy, I started going to church, right? And therapy really helps you process right? It, it truly, Jesus and therapy truly helps you process, but it helps you go back to the root of the things that you are going through. And it helps you pull those roots. Because even as a leader, you may be going through certain things. You can't figure out why you're going through certain things. Why are you having certain challenges? Why you have difficulty with certain people? The thing is, it's the root you need to get to. It's not the person, it's not the environment, it's the root. And so when we don't deal with our root problems, then we continue to produce fruit, which sometimes we look at it as good fruit because we're producing, but it's really bad fruit. Because if we have any unforgiveness in our hearts, that's bad fruit. If we have any pride or self-righteousness or insecurities or fears or doubt, that's bad fruit. And so we're not really able to step into the person that we were created to be. We're not able to see people or even ourselves the way that we were created to be. And so we have a lot of limits on us. And so I truly feel that therapy, Jesus in therapy, and realizing that it's not your fault and healing is possible. And, and forgiving that person is key. See, what people don't realize about forgiveness, forgiveness is not about the person. Forgiveness is about you. And once you forgive that person, you take your power back. Because when you have unforgiveness in your heart, you continue to live in the past. You cannot move forward. You cannot see clearly. And doors, the way that doors are supposed to open for you, they will open because some people think because they're winning, because they're making money, because they have opportunity, right? That everything is good. But let me tell you something. When you allow God to do that root work, when you allow God to soften that heart, when you allow God to pull down those walls, honey, the opportunities, the amount of money that's in your bank account, 
right? The rooms that he was able to be in, huh, you know, no, no ears have heard, no eyes have seen. Right. And so I feel like it's important to get to the root and do that root work. You can't you can't run from it. You can't. Yeah. Years have gone away. You say you have forgiven your father, your mother, whoever. But the question is, have you and have you forgiven yourself? Because we tend to um, blame ourselves for the things that happen to us. So forgiveness works two ways. You have to forgive the person and you have to forgive yourself and, and let it go. Good. You know, the fruit of being fatherless is what <laughs> is what I heard as you were talking. Just the fruit of being fatherless is what that looks like. And I, I want to take a moment and, and speak to those viewers that are tuned in or listeners um, that maybe did grow up with both parents. And let me just say this, just because you had both parents in the house still doesn't mean that both parents were present. So you might still be experiencing some of the trauma of having a fatherless father or a motherless mother, even though they were physically in the same house, um, but emotionally, mentally, or whatever reason, they weren't there in the same house. So you could be experiencing some of these same things as well. So this is really good stuff, good stuff. And I know that for me, I can talk to my mother and my father differently. So my mother, she's the type that, you know, internalizes everything, personalizes everything. So even if something has nothing to do with her, she takes it personal and, you know, her feelings are hurt very easily. And, and that's okay. That's who she is, you know, an emotional person. Whereas my father, you can be more straight up and real with him. Like, <laughs> you know, you can keep it a little more raw, a little more gutta, right? <laughs> and so it wasn't until I reached that point where I was able to express my feelings wholly. Um, first, I had to identify what were my feelings exactly and what was this resentment that I had built up over the years and being willing to address that within myself, but then being willing to address that with him. So one thing that I would suggest for folks is like, write a letter to that parent, that missing parent, um, whether they were literally missing or metaphorically missing, write a letter, whether you decide to give it to them or not, will be your decision. Um, but that is a first step in healing. And so what is some other advice that you can share with the first class family on starting to heal, um, you know, just that, that overall journey of healing from having that absent parent? Um, the one thing that comes to my mind is grace. The thing is, sometimes we want to be mad at our parent because they are not there. And we think that, oh, they should be there. They, sh they should know that they need to be there. But we don't know what type of upbringing our parents had, right? What type of trauma they had themselves that did not allow them to show up for us the way that we needed them to show up. And like sometimes I tell myself, I'm like, my mom did the best that she could with what she was giving, right? So she, mm -hmm. we generally raise our kids the way that we are raised, okay? And so yes, write a letter of forgiveness to your, your mother, your father. And then also you have to also be able to give them grace because a lot of this fatherless, motherless, neglect, um, not being emotionally there, even though that you're physically there, it's a lot of generational trauma, right? The one thing I tell people often is it didn't, it didn't start with you, right? This didn't begin with you. And so being able to understand forgiveness and giving that person grace and not having any expectations of that person and knowing that you have a father who will all who has always loved you right who will never leave you who will never forsake you who created you on purpose for a purpose who sees you as his masterpiece and you lean into him and that's Jesus you lean into him and you get to know him. You get to know what he says about you and the plan that he has for you. 
And that pain that you felt, the key is to get to the other side of that pain, right? Which is the most difficult part. But I tell you, once you get to the other side of that pain, we're just going to take time. So you also have to give yourself grace and don't think that you're just going to wake up and you get over it. It's a process. Everything in life is a process. But let me tell you something. Once you start to look at the process differently, once you start to look at every difficult time in the process, every test, every storm and say, what can I learn from this? Right then you're able to start turning that pain into joy. And once you start experiencing that joy, you'd be like, wow, I don't even remember that, right? I don't even remember feeling that way. I don't even remember being that upset. I don't remember being that low. I don't remember being that depressed. Because the joy that he's he gives you, it makes you forget about everything. And I'm a true believer that our story is for his glory. Right. And so the thing is what you've gone through in your life with your mother or your father not being there or them being present, but not being emotionally there. It's a purpose in that. And so staying focused on that purpose, because I promise you, you're going to meet someone right who's in the same situation and they don't know how to get to the other side of it. Right. They feel like no one else understands. They feel lost. Maybe they're even ready to take their life or give up on life. But God has placed you in their life to help them get to the other side of that pain because your story sounds very similar to their story, right? And you know how to help them. You know, by sharing your story, it's going to give them hope. And so... I tell people all the time, like, whatever you're going through in life, regardless if it's being a fatherless child, motherless child, everyone goes through something, but it looks different. I say we all have scars, right? But not the same weapon form the scars we have. But it's only one person that can help heal those scars, and that's Jesus. And once we're able to lean into him and and understand what he says about us and what he has planned for us and we experience him then we're able to really live a fulfilled purpose-filled life yes listen i feel like we need to pass the collection plate (laughs) around (laughs) so i think that this would be a great time to take a pause take a breather and play a little game that i call first class favorite. So let me get my timer here. And it's really simple, okay? I'm going to give you a prompt and all you have to do is fill in the blanks. Easy peasy, right? (laughs) But you got to answer it within 10 seconds. And sometimes our brain does this crazy thing where whenever we put a timer on something, it wants to go blank. So we'll see how you do. And for all the first class family that's tuned in right now, You already know, feel free to turn this into a game. So if she misses the buzzer, you either got to take a shot or if you want to do something healthy, do a push up or run a lap or something. (laughs) So we'll see whether she's going to have you getting drunk or, or, you know, doing some exercising. So (laughs) no pressure, no pressure. We'll start you with an easy one. What is your favorite season of the year? Go. Summer. Ooh, summer. I think I would have to say summer as well because it's warm. I don't like it. Like <laughs> and I'm a January baby too. And I'm like, mm, I don't like the cold. Yes. Plus the days are longer, you know. I, I'm gonna have to stick with you with that summer. Um, what is your favorite season? Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, no, season. Wait, no, no. <laughs> We just did that one, right? We said summer. Listen, y'all, I promise I haven't been drinking anything right. but water. Stop. What, what is your favorite month of the year? Go. January. It's the year I was born, so ain't no better month than then. Okay, okay. I'm going to let you have that one. I'm going to let you have that one, even though I would bet the different that is October. But we're all going to have a difference of opinions. <laughs> What is your favorite place to travel specifically? Go. Oh, wow. Um, Hawaii. 
Oh, Hawaii. Yes, yes. So I have not been to Hawaii. What was your favorite thing about Hawaii? I just went to Hawaii. It's just so beautiful. Like everywhere you look, it's just like, is this real? Like, I feel like it's a picture. Like this is like fake. But it was just so, I love mountains. So like everywhere mm -hmm. I would look, it was like mountains, greenery. It was just so, besides being expensive, beautiful. <laughs> Nice, nice. Okay. What's your favorite book, title, and author? Go. Ooh, I would say um, Crushed, TDJ. Cross? Crushed. Crushed. Got it. Crushed by TD Jakes. Okay. So, got that one. Um, what's your favorite song? Go. Hmm. Unstoppable. Uh, by Alicia Keys? Um, no, by Kar Karen Hawthorne. Oh, got it. Got it. Okay. I know which song you're talking about. Nice. Nice. What's your favorite activity to do to relax? Go. Nothing. <laughs> Sit in my bed and binge watch a show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I understood what you meant when you said nothing. I get it because, you know, sometimes we can be so much on the go, busy, 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 and doing just nothing is nice. Don't have to think, don't have to move, just be. Yes. So <laughs> what is your favorite food? Go. I'm a foodie, so you can't even ask me that question. I love all the food. <laughs> But my top, I love Mexican food and I love Thai food. Oh, nice, nice. Do you drink, um, what is it, mango lassi? I don't know if I've ever That's had my... mango lassi. Yes, it's a drink. It's a sweet drink, kind of like a smoothie. Um, but that's what I like to get whenever I go to Thai restaurants. I to so, mm. Yeah, Spanish. Well, thank you for playing First Class Favorites. And... Listen, family, if you are a member of our private Patreon community, then you will have access to our first class favorite things list that is uniquely curated by all of the phenomenal guests here on the First Class Live show. So you will be able to see our running ongoing list of a reading list, our playlist to get us in the mood, places to travel because we're all about jet setting here on First Class Life, and relaxing activity for your self-care pleasure, okay? So thank you for being a contributing uh, author to that, to that list. <laughs> Looking for amazing products to help boost your first class lifestyle? Then head over to firstclasslifeshop.com where you can treat yourself to personal development books and workbooks, lifestyle affirmation cards, adult coloring books, mugs, notebooks, hoodies, t-shirts, leggings, and more. All products were designed to help you master your mindset, walk in your purpose, and live your first class life because you deserve it. So treat yourself today at firstclasslifeshop.com. Again, that's firstclasslifeshop.com. Now let's hop back into this conversation. So we talked about being a fatherless child and what that looked like and how that started to show up in your behaviors as far as people pleasing and, and doing all the things. When would you say is the first time that you actually recognized what was happening with your behaviors and where it stemmed from? The very first time, I would truly say it wasn't until my 20s mm -hmm. that I started to realize that something wasn't right. I couldn't, I couldn't pinpoint it, but I started to feel like, mm. Mm. because, you know, like when you are nice to everyone, like you're a people pleaser and you're nice to everyone, then you start to get burnt, right? Because people start to take advantage of your kindness. Um, when you don't know how to set boundaries, healthy boundaries, and people start to take advantage of your time, your energy, and your money. And so it starts to hurt. You, know, you, start, you start to go through some things. Um, and that's when I realized that 
hmm, something's not right. Yeah. So true. And it's funny that you say that because I didn't like fully realize how it impacted me until my 20s as well when I was on my own personal development journey. And so again, that's why it's important, especially as leaders, that we understand our behaviors, that we go down that um, development and growth path of understanding our subconscious beliefs and healing our past experiences from our childhood and adolescence and things like that. So I want to ask you, um, you know, in, in understanding, all right, this is happening because of growing up without a dad and you know you started going to therapy you're giving yourself grace um what were some things that you did to start to turn it around and actually change your behaviors just outside of going therapy but how are you intentional about you know changing those behaviors you know the biggest battle is in the mind right and so i had to really do some mind work because the negative thoughts were just always there. And so I had to start changing the way that I was thinking because our thoughts become our actions, which becomes our habits. Um, and so I had to really do some mind work. I had to really let go of certain mindsets and then letting go of certain mindsets and Pulling back, peeling back the layers, you start to see things differently. So that means like, oh, you start to let go of some people too, because you start to show up differently, right? You start to show up as the person that you was, that you were always, but you didn't see it, right? So you can't fully step, show up as that person. So when you start to set boundaries with people, when you start to tell people no, when you start to be more confident and, and bold in who you are and the gifts and the talents that you have been, um, you know, blessed with, then people start to look at, oh, she acting real different. Oh, she, you know, you know how people be, but you still have to continue to show up as that person. Right. Because if you know, if you were truly for me, then you know my heart. Right. You know that this was always in me. And if you are truly for me, then you won't make me them my own light. You'll be saying, girl, let that light shine bright. Right. And so I had to really start doing that mind work. So for for me, it's like the negative thoughts don't really stop coming. Right. But how long I will allow them to stay is what's key and if I allow them to keep me paralyzed because we all experience fear. We all experience like the negative thoughts, but what you do next is what matters most. Are you gonna allow that thought to control you? Or are you gonna control that thought? Because in the end we have the control. And so really setting those boundaries, really doing the mind work, I'm just really truly believing in myself. Because once I start peeling, I started to see me, I can see me, not because someone was telling me, but because this is who I was. I didn't need anyone to tell me that I'm beautiful for me to be beautiful. I'm just beautiful. I didn't need someone to tell me that I was intelligent. I was already intelligent. And so I just started boldly walking into and to who God had called me to be, who God had created me to be, regardless of who was, because I was always looking for people to support me, to have my back and all that. Sometimes I had to walk on my own. Sometimes I had to walk blindly. But he was always there. That's good. That is some good stuff because, you know, it's important that we realize who we are outside of, you know, the people around us and the upbringing that we had and, um, you know, knowing that we are good enough just as we are, despite who may or may not be in our lives. We are intelligent. We are beautiful. We are leaders. We are worthy of all the things. And there is no person that can make us good enough or not good enough that all comes within from within and it's important that we recognize that we have always been good enough 
we will always be good enough and that we are right now good enough as is. And so, um, yeah, this has been a really good discussion, just picking that apart because as leaders, it's important that we recognize all of the inner workings of the things that we go through. So I would like to ask you a very specific question. If you are new to the First Class Life show, then you may not know that First Class Life is actually an acronym. Okay, it stands for all of the characteristics and skills that you want to embody into your lifestyle to create a life full of purpose, fulfillment, and happiness. And the more of them that you can embody, the higher quality of life you are creating for yourself because it is definitely up to you to uh, determine how you want to live your life. And so if you want to find out what those factors are, then you can do one of two things. You can either go back and listen to the very, very first episode of the First Class Life podcast, where I explain in detail each of the factors, or you can visit firstclasslifeshop.com and purchase the book, okay? Purchase the book right there behind me. And again, I explain it all in the book with resources and bonus um you know, just tools that you can use to really start to incorporate those things. So with that said, lovely, lovely Marcia, tell us which of the first class life factors do you feel that you resonate with the most? I would say faithful, um, thankful, self-worth, let's see, and self-care, reflective, reflective. Sorry, I'm sending a lot of oil. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. You gave us a lot. So which one of those do you think the most? And tell us why. I would say in this season in my life, I would definitely say thankful. Um, we tend to take things for granted. Just simply mm-hmm. waking up today, that's a blessing. Because some people did not wake up. Not only did some people not wake up, I woke up, I opened my eyes and I could see. Some people open their eyes and they they can't see nothing. It's still dark. And so I am very great. The gas prices are going up. I'm still thankful, right? Because God continues to provide for me. Despite whatever I may be going through, despite what my bank account say, despite what the doctors may say, despite what my boss may say, what anyone may say, I am still grateful because he provides my needs, each and every one of them. So I'm I'm thankful, girl. I love it. Yes, yes. You got to be grateful, okay? You got to be thankful uh, because whenever we express gratitude, even whenever times are bad or when we're going through obstacles, we attract more things to be grateful for in our lives. And so sometimes you have to be thankful for what is and what is not at the same time because we never know what we're being protected from um, as well. So... Ooh, that could be a whole nother episode right there. Okay. <laughs> so tell us, how do you serve the world today as a leader? I'm a nurse by profession. Um, and so right now I'm working in the nursing field as a director of nursing. So I oversee three um, centers. And um, within that organization, I have about five different programs that I oversee as a director of nursing. Um, I'm also the host and founder of Faith Focus and Finish Strong, a weekly um, Zoom talk. And in with that, I, I do empowerment speaking and I'm a breakthrough strategist. Also a nonprofit co-founder. Guys, I had to mute my mic because uh, somebody got a little mouthy down there. <laughs> He's starting to hear the kids come off mm-hmm. the bus. And so, uh, yeah. He's letting it be known that he's here to guard the house, okay? So (laughs) excuse that interruption, but yes, yes. And what products or services do you have? Um, Right now, I have only free products. I have um, a weekly Zoom talk that is free. Anyone can join. It's every Thursday at 8.30 p.m. on Zoom. And if you go to my website or any of my social media platforms, you can find out more information. 
Yes, and we will have all of that info in um, the show description so that you will be able to find how to connect with her, which speaking of which, tell everyone where they can find you on these internet streets. Okay, you can find me everywhere, Marcia N. Cole. Um, on That's my website, that's Instagram, Clubhouse, Facebook, wherever. It's always Marcia N. Cole. Nice, nice. Make sure y'all reach out to her and connect um, because she is flat. All right. So do all the things. Do you have any final words of advice on how to create your first class life? Just be you. That's just be you. Heal from whatever you need to heal from, from your childhood. Forgive whoever you need to forgive. Give yourself grace. And don't be nobody else but you because someone is waiting for you to show up, right? They're waiting for who God created you to be. And my question for you is that you need to think about is who is not showing up because you haven't showed up? Who is dying because you haven't showed up? And what's dying inside of you because you have not allowed yourself to show up? That's all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what is dying inside of you because you have not allowed yourself to show up? And um, I know we kind of just closed that a little bit, but if you don't mind, I have another follow-up question. What you just said kind of triggered that. You talked about dying because I know that you have lost someone very close to you and you mentioned it briefly um, towards the beginning of the show. But, you know, what was that like? to lose someone so close to you um, as far as how you were able to maintain life, how you were able to keep on going despite losing someone so close to you? God, like without him, I probably would be in a casket too, or I probably would be in, behind somebody's bars. Cause like I said, my brother was murdered, you know? Um, but I I had to sit in it. We are so quick when we go through things. We're so quick to just get up and keep going. We don't allow ourselves to process things. We don't allow ourselves to work through our emotions, all of our emotions. We tend to run from our emotions, certain emotions, but I allow myself to work through each and every emotion. It's not caring about anyone else and what they thought, how they thought I should heal, how they thought I should process. It was me and God. And I realized going back to being thankful, God did not have to give me 22 years with my brother. Some people don't get one day. Some people only get five years, six years. Some people never leave the hospital. And I'm not saying like a mother give birth and then her child you know, passes away. I'm saying kids who have cancer, who can't even leave out the hospital room because as soon as they leave the room, they may die because their immune system is so weak. But God gave me 22 years and we had good memories and, and memories are something that nobody can take away. When you have good memories, that's something nobody can take away. And I allow myself to heal. I got into third, I did my therapy, I did my processing, my journaling, my praying, my reflecting, um, and I forgave. Forgiving, it was easy for me because where I am in my life, it's like within an hour of the doctor saying that we did all that we could, we couldn't stop the bleeding, I said, I forgive her. Because first of all, who am I to judge anyone? Regardless of what she did, yeah, she took my 22-year-old brother's life. I won't ever get to see nieces and nephews come from him. I won't ever get to see him get married. But two, who am I to judge? I am an imperfect being. Not only that, if I want to be mad at her, I need to be mad at everybody that was called to show up for her. Because who didn't show up for her so she could be able to to know how to cope with things. So she could be able to know what's wrong and what's not. So she could be able to get the help that she needs, right? Because in, in the African-American community, 
we don't look at mental health the way that we should. We don't get the help that we need. We don't support people to get the help that they need. Mental health is real. And so I was able, because of where I was in life, I was able to process. And so anyone who may have lost someone, especially, we're all gonna die one day, right? But in our minds, it's like, okay, so I lost my grandmother, she was older. Maybe I lost a parent or a loved one or someone, but they were older. But nowadays we're starting to see young people dying, freak accidents, car accidents, gun violence, you know? And it's hard because it's like, you don't, it messes up the order of life. You're not, we're not used to people dying so young, right? But even in that, there's purpose. Because now my brother passed away and it was a domestic situation. And when you think about domestic violence, you tend to think about women, right? You don't really think about men as much. So now I can take his story to help other people, right? So it's one life for a million. So whenever you're dealing with loss and you're allowing yourself to process, you're allowing yourself to heal, you're joining support groups, right? You're going to individual therapy, you're holding on to the memories, then take find the purpose in it, right? How can I make sure that my, my brother's voice will not be silenced? Because the only way that our loved one's voice is silenced is when we stop talking, mm. right? So now I'm his voice. He is physically gone, but his spirit still leaves, lives. And I'm thankful for that because at my brother's funeral, people were walking up to me to say, wow, what they were saying about your brother, people are 60, 70. I've never heard them say stuff like that about uh, people. And so he served his purpose. And I have to thank God for that, right? And so tomorrow's not promised. The next hour is not promised. The next minute is not promised. And so that's why we have to live life now. That's why we have to heal now, right? Because we can't keep pushing stuff off because tomorrow may never come. You may never have enough time. You may never have enough money. You may never have the right ed education or the right connections. Is what you do now. Do it now. But first, you have to allow yourself to heal. You have to allow yourself to process. And then continue to put one foot in front of the other. Because I tell people, it doesn't matter how fast you get there as long as you get there. It doesn't matter how you start or when you start as long as you start. Even if you're crawling. Even if you have to cry and you're crawling. It's okay. Cry. Whatever you got to do, just get there. That was so good. And I, I'm, <laughs> I'm glad we had that little, little extra bonus at the end because that was powerful, especially the part where you said not only did you have to forgive her, but forgive the people who didn't show up for her so she could be the best person. And I think that is a testament to making sure that we are our best selves. And if we don't have the people around us to support us in being our best selves, that we make ourselves uncomfortable to go out there and, and find the support that we need because we're not always going to be up. We're not always going to be sitting on top of the horse. You know, sometimes we fall off of the horse. Sometimes we're down in the valley and, and we don't have the strength to pick ourselves up. And that's where that support system can come in. So making sure that we are um, creating the support system that we desire uh, so that they are there whenever we need them to be. So that just really stood out saying that, you know, the people that didn't show up for her so that she could be the best person. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Tell everyone where they can find you once again. Okay, <laughs> so my website, okay. all social media platforms is Marcia N. Cole. That's Marcia N. Cole. Yes, 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 yes. And definitely make sure that you share this episode out. And I know you could be doing anything in the world, but you are here with us tuned into the First Class Life podcast. And we appreciate that. We are grateful for you for being a part of this first class family. And we are thankful for our lovely, lovely guests. Miss Marcia N. Cole. Make sure you check her out, follow her on social media, and do all the things. You can find that info in the show notes. 
And with that, go out there and keep being the amazing leader that you are and know that you deserve a first class life full of purpose, fulfillment, and happiness. Bye. Bye. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. But please be sure to subscribe to the First Class Life Show. And don't forget to rate, leave a review, and join our private community so that we can continue to provide you with great personal development conversations to help you maximize your impact while creating a life full of purpose, fulfillment, and happiness. You deserve it. Do you want to be surrounded by other high achieving women who are working on their goals just like you? Are you looking for your circle that's passionate about their own growth yet still wants to see you shine? Do you desire to be supported through collaborations and connections instead of competition? Then Cowork and Chill is your place to be. Cowork and Chill is a hybrid of virtual co-working and virtual networking. It's a community of women who are striving to build living legacies. This is the space to create meaningful relationships with other equally yoked women where you're being poured into just as much as you pour out. So if you're looking for your crew for supportive accountability, then sign up today at coworkandchill.com. That's C-O-W-O-R-K-A-N-D-C-H-I-L-L coworkandchill.com.